Right, and I think we are live, as always with these live streams. Hello, welcome, but let me know in the chat if you can hear me and you can see me okay. Hopefully everything's working. And today we're going to be doing a slightly different unboxing video. Now, this game arrived uh, middle of last week. This is uh, going to be a new release at Essen Spiel. Ludenova were very kind to send me an advanced copy of the game. Um, and I said, look, I'm probably not going to get a chance to cover it on the channel. I'll do an unboxing video for you, but I'm probably not going to get a chance to play it. However, I played it on Saturday. So the game has already been unboxed. It's already been punched. It's already been played, but I already had scheduled an unboxing video. So what we're going to do is I am going to unbox it, but I'm actually going to tell you a little bit about the game because I've played it. So I know about it uh, and I can tell you about it. But this is, this is what it looks like once it has been opened, once it has been punched, uh, and here's what you get. And it's all sorted out in nice little baggies. Your copy will not come like this. <laughs> so I've already put it away. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go through all of those bits, take them to one side. Uh, four player boards, uh, reference sheets, one in English, one in Spanish. We'll get rid of those. Solo mode reference sheet, uh, rule book in English and Spanish. We'll get to that in a minute. And the game board. The game board's big. Oh, nice little touch inside of the box uh, has got this. Now, uh, one of the reasons why I asked uh, the publisher to send me a copy of the game is... The designer of this game is the designer of Bitoku. And for those people who have watched my videos over the last year, Bitoku is very, very likely to be my number one game of last year. If it's not my number one game of last year, it, it's possibly my joint number one game of last year. So Bitoku, I absolutely love. And this is the designer's next game. And it's got a big board. <laughs> now, the board is two-sided. Uh, this is the side for three and four players, as you can see here. Just open it up carefully without breaking it. So yeah, we've got we've got a big board. Uh, and then, as I say, each player is going to have their own their own player board as well. Um, and yeah, so components wise, we've got a two sided board. Um, it's very similar on the other side. It isn't that much different. There's just um, fewer spaces for these, fewer spaces for these, uh, and fewer spaces for those. Um, but other than that, it, it's pretty much the same. Um, so yeah, so that's the main game board. Now, each player is going to have their own player board like this. And let me just zoom in on the other camera. Let's get a bit of a view on here. I might need to zoom out a bit. Yeah, so each player has their own player board, as you can see here. Uh, and you have, let's say we're playing blue, you have four workers in this game. So you've got four workers in this game. Uh, I can't remember exactly what they're called. That one's a merchant, and that one's a poet, I think, or something like that. Uh, and then you've got these ones. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be placing these workers uh, onto the main model of the board. You've also got uh, your workshop here. So you've got spaces here. Uh, you start off with a base workshop tile, starting workshops in here like this. Uh, and this is quite a clever mechanism. So the way this works, let me just zoom in a little bit more and show you how this works. Camera's wobbling a bit. Um, so what each of these uh, storehouses, are they called storehouses? That's it. Master, builder, trader, and poet. I was right with a poet. Um, so the number of little crate icons that you see here, that is the capacity of this uh, workshop or storehouse or whatever it's called. I can't remember. Let me just have a look what it's called quickly. It's called a storehouse. It is a storehouse. Um, so you can store one good on here because there is a little crate icon there. Okay. Now, during the game... Let's get the workshops. Uh, other workshops are available. Uh, and what you can do is you can buy these other workshops and you can, up sorry, not workshops, storehouses. <laughs> I don't know why I've got the name workshop in my mind. And what you do is you build these over the top. So your first one will go over the top like that and that will get you one point. That's the symbol for a victory point. So you'll get one point by putting it over the top. And now this storehouse has a capacity of two and you can upgrade it a second time. The second time you upgrade it, you get two points and what you do is you slot it there and that storehouse now has a capacity of four. So that's quite a little clever mechanism about, about how you store your resources. You also get these bonuses on the top, but that's one of the things you're going to be doing in the game is you're going to be gaining resources uh, and you're going to be storing them in your storehouses. Now, the core mechanism of the game is around this rondel here. So what we've got is we've actually got, oh, that's where it went. I thought I'd lost one of those. Um, we've got a rondel made up of three rings. Uh, and the master builders go around the outer ring. 
The merchant goes around the middle ring and the poet goes around the inner ring. Now in a four player game, you don't have any dummy workers. But if you're playing with uh, one, two or three players, because there is a solo mode, then you actually have, where are they? You have these gold workers. Put them somewhere. Yeah, you have these gold workers. They are dummy workers and they basically occupy the slots. Now what you're going to be doing on your turn is you choose which one of your four workers you want to activate. If they're not on the board, you can put them into any of any of the segments. Obviously, the master builders go in the outer one. Um, or if they're on a segment, then you can move them up to two spaces. Now, you can pay to move them further, so money is a resource as well. And if you move into a se segment that has uh, workers of another player, you have to pay coins as well. So yeah, basically that's the main mechanism. So the player interaction in the game, there isn't really that much direct player interaction because you're going to want to use, you're going to want to go to the action that you want to go to. You're not going to try and deliberately block somebody else, um, but you might have to pay if there are other, other players, workers there. And then what you do is you move to the section that you want to do and you basically carry out the action. Now there's a primary action in each of these. I'm not going to go through them. This is just a just an overview video, uh, but you'll move around, you'll carry out the action, and then there are these secondary actions as well. So if you're on a space uh, which is bordering one of those, you can do a secondary action. That's the core mechanism of the game. Now, there's lots of things that you're going to be doing in this game. I class this as a medium weight Euro, possibly a little bit medium to heavy i'm not sure but that all depends on what type of games you play if you're used to playing heavy games this is a medium game if you're used to playing lighter games this is a medium to heavy game but it fits somewhere into that bracket and for those of you that watch my channel and you know the kind of games i like this game hits the sweet spot for me in terms of complexity uh, any more complex than this i'm not saying uh, yeah Okay, if it was a bit more complex than this, I'd still be okay with it. But what I'm saying is that the level of complexity in this game is is just about right for me with the amount of rules that you've got going on. Now, when you get the game, the first thing you need to do is you need to separate the cards. Now, the cards come in, so some of the cards have no text on, um, and you will use those. But some of the other cards have text on, and the game comes with English and Spanish cards. So you will first need to take out... The language that you don't want get rid of that we accidentally mixed them in with our first game and then wondered why we couldn't read some of the text um but there are various types of cards in the game so there is uh one trade card which you choose at random at the start of the game the trade card will go there and that will determine an end game condition which is generally based on the stuff that's going on down here you will also have uh some of these uh poems so you've got three types of poems. You've got uh, red ones and blue ones, which will go over here. And when you take one of those, you can choose whether you want to take the left side, which is the blue side, or the right side, which is the red side. Uh, you've also got some major poems, which are the ones with the grey back. Now, these are dealt out at the start of the game, and they never get replaced. Uh, they're quite expensive to build, but they're going to get you lots of points. Because thematically, what you're doing is you're building the Alhambra. And the poems is basically you're etching those poems onto the walls of the Alhambra uh, and you have to spend resources to do so. You've also got some improvements which go here. Let me just zoom in on these so that you can see them because the artwork on these is really nice. Uh, there we go. Right. So these, these are the minor improvements. Um, so when you when you take one of these, you have to pay the resource that's printed at the bottom. You can also, if you want to, pay extra resources. And the more resources you pay, the more points you're going to get. But what you'll do is each player starts with... Where is it? There are some starting cards. Here we go. You have a starting card. So each player will start with one of these starting cards. And you'll notice that it's got a colour on one side and it's got a question mark on the other side. So whenever you take one of these, what you can do is you line it up like that. And if you match the colours, then you get the bonus that's printed here. So there's a little bit of a, uh, not really set collection, but trying, trying to match things there. Also, there are icons on the top because certain things in the game will refer to uh, if you've got a certain amount of these things. Storehouses will go here and here. There's other improvements at the top. There's also the round track at the top. The game lasts for five rounds. And there is a thing called Sultan's Favours. So what you've got is you have some Sultan's Favours and you decide at random one of the A's, one of the B's, one of the C's, and you put them there, there, and there. And then as the game goes on, when we get to round two, the first Sultan's Favour goes here. And everybody is going to score 
based on the condition of the Sultan's favour. When we get to round four, we move the second Sultan's favour to here and we score them both again. So we score the Sultan's favour. The first Sultan's favour is actually going to score three times during the game. So yeah, lots of opportunity to score points with that. One of the actions that you can do is, uh, well, as the game goes on, you're going to be getting these raw materials. Uh, where's the raw materials? So the raw materials are cardboard counters. Uh, let's just show these a little bit closer. So these are the raw materials. Uh, these start. These are just normal cardboard tokens. These start off in the bag and they'll get placed onto these spaces here. And you can collect them and you can place them onto your player board. Uh, when you place them onto your player board, you can then refine them later on, whereby you flip them over. So the silk cloth you will turn into clothing and the clothing will go in, into your storehouse. Then what you will do is you will ship them to these places here. So at the start of the game, you will allocate at random one of these uh, tiles above each city. And that indicates what the city most wants. But what you'll do is one of the actions is to basically sail your boat, sail it across the seas and deliver goods to the cities. And that's going to get you points and it's going to get you all sorts of bonuses. You can establish trade relationships uh, with the various things on here as well. Uh, other components in the game are the other types of resources. So these are the materials. Um, and again, we just just to show these components off, because these are quite nice. Here we go. So these are the different type of components that you get in the game. You've got marble, you've got gypsum, you've got wood, and you've got uh, crystal glass, which is a, a nice plasticky piece. Um, that's it. Oh, player pieces. While while we're zoomed in, I'll show you the player pieces. So yeah, these little boats are very very nice. And what else have we got? We got some money, normal normal cardboard money. Uh, I think that's about it. It is just a quick overview of how it plays. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering what I think about this game. And tomorrow morning, I'm planning to record my monthly video log where I will talk a bit more about the game. Um, but I did enjoy it. Now, the first thing is, a lot of you will know that I do a lot of sponsored videos on the channel. Uh, this is not a sponsored video in any way. Ludonova were very kind to send me a, a, a copy of the game in advance, but no money has changed hands. I'm not doing any sponsored videos for them which means I can be completely honest about it and say whatever I want about the game. And after my first play, which was at two players, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm not going to say, oh, straight away, it's my number one game of the year, but the mechanisms were very solid. I felt that the decisions that we were making in the game were very interesting. There was a number of ways to get victory points in the game. We've only played it the once. So, you know, we were kind of doing a bit of everything, but there is a good mix of planning for the future, certainly with the... Um, the Sultan's favour tiles are on, on how you're going to get points for that. But there's also lots of different options and you're not going to do everything in the game. So I think in our game, I collected a few of these, but Adrian didn't collect any of them. We both upgraded our storehouses a little bit. Um, the blue side of the poems give you an ongoing benefit, whereas the red side gives you a permanent benefit. Um, so you've got choices there. None of us went for any of these grey ones because it was a learning game. So, so we didn't know... Uh, we, we didn't really look at these. We, we, we spent most of the game learning. And then by the time we looked at these, we realized it was probably a bit too late. Um, but yeah, the, these can get you quite a lot of points if you do the conditions on them. So once the game is set up, you will need to look at the Sultan's Favours. You will need to look at these ones uh, and you'll need to look at the trade card as well in, in order to work out, right, how am I going to get my points in this game? Uh, and how am I going to work out, you know, what it is that you want to do? But certainly, for my one play of it, I was I was impressed. I thought the gameplay was very good. Um, Michael is asking, is there good player interaction at two? The, I, as I mentioned earlier on at the start, the player interaction in this game is, is very, very low. In fact, there is almost no player interaction other than if I decide to use that space and you were going to use that space, it's now going to cost you an extra coin to use the space. So it's not really me directly affecting you. Um, the player interaction... Well, at that level of the game, in a two-player game, you've got two players moving around the rondelle and you've got the gold pieces for the third player. In a three-player game, you will have the gold pieces as the fourth player and in a four-player game, you don't use the gold pieces. So I think um, certainly the cost to move around the rondelle in a uh, one- and two-player game, I've not played the solo game yet, but there is a solo mode included, uh, the cost would be less, generally speaking, than it would be in a three- and four-player game because you'd, you'd have more pieces on here. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think that's, that's pretty much everything. Um, 
I would like to be able to do a playthrough of this game before Essen. It's on my list, but uh, I've got a lot of videos to do in the next few weeks, so I'm not I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to be able to fit it in or not. I'll try, but if I don't, I'll be looking at doing a playthrough um, after Resin. But if you're a patron supporter of mine, you have access to the video from Saturday. So if you're a patron supporter of mine and you missed the email, then on Saturday evening, just gone, me and Adrian got this game out, we unboxed it, we learned how to play from the rulebook, and we played it. And that was a live stream for patrons only on the channel. Speaking of the Patreon campaign, as I mentioned, this is not a sponsored video in any way. So these videos that I create and a lot of the other content that I create is only made possible thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign. And a lot of people who are watching this are patron supporters of mine, so thank you very much. Uh, but if you're not a patron supporter and you are in a position to be able to support me, I do rely on the support of the Patreon in order to fund the channel. It's patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Other than that, I look forward to seeing Ludo Nova at Essen Spiel. Even though I've now got a copy of the game, I will, I will stop by and say hello. Uh, and as I say, keep an eye on the channel. If I do manage to get a, a video of this done before Essen, I will try. But if not, I will get one done before Essen. Uh, sorry, after Essen. I know what I'm talking about. I've got a hedgehog to, I've got to take to the vets right now, so I'm a little bit distracted. Um, so yeah, I'm going to disappear off to the vets with a hedgehog. You don't hear that every day. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.